What's up everybody, this is Zach with Veteran Construction. Today, we're gonna to be giving you guys some pointers. I was gonna call this like my top five uh, shingling tips and tricks or something, or speed tricks, but let's be real. Uh, I don't put enough time in these videos to actually determine what five. So look, what it really comes down to is finding an efficient way to do things and then being consistent throughout the whole entire process of a roof, okay? So that's what, I'm gonna give you some, some of my tips on what I do for that, and this stuff will speed you up, I swear it will. And you know, if, if, uh, if it doesn't, I'm sorry. Okay. But anyway, this, this starts with the most basic thing, right? Like I just took over the side here. One of my newer guys was shingling and look where the hose is. You know, the hose is ran all the way around this whole, whole hip here and then around to this edge. So it's going to keep sliding off that roof. It's going to keep getting in my way. So what, what you can do is run it back. You might've had it that way for a reason earlier, but you know, this is part of it. We gotta run it. We gotta run it in a way that makes sense. Alright. So So earlier it would have been in James' way. Now it's not, right? So now we've got the weight of the hose on the roof. These flexilla hoses are really nice by the way. I'll never probably buy any other uh, hose to shingle with. Okay, but now, now we don't have to worry too much. We can even pull this out this way. We don't have to worry too much about our hose sliding off and causing shiners. Okay, so that's one thing. And then uh, whatever you do, if you wear a pouch, you know, do that consistently. I don't because I've come up with methods to, you know, shingle for long periods of time and not be weighed down by a pouch. All right, so if you're gonna be spreading your nails out, do it the same way every time. I just put it roughly where I where I'm gonna run out. There's other videos of me talking about that. Okay, and then uh, let's just get straight down to the most important thing. Okay, and I can talk about my starter and things like that later. The stuff's gonna play a big part in how fast you are. But for the most part, you want to do the same thing on your run. The gravy is what I call it, right? When you get to that gravy run, where you can run up run up a whole bundle or even more before you get into your next obstacles, pipes or whatever it is. Okay, so don't get me wrong, you have to get good at the, you know, the cut-up stuff in order to be fast overall on a roof. My motivation to get good at the cut-up stuff was I always wanted to get to that gravy run because that's what I mastered first. I got good at running these runs very quickly, so when it was to get into a pipe and everything, I was always trying to take that gravy run. And that, in turn, sped me up throughout the whole day, and I eventually got really good at getting around the obstacle, okay? So... First things first, um, you want to spread your shingles out in an efficient way and consistently. You want to do the same thing over and over. So what I do is I feel for the reveal, and it's down here, okay, and I'll bring this over to here. Now I've actually changed this since I started doing the shingling competitions, or uh, the challenges I guess. I used to take my knife and cut it open. I still do that from time to time. But one thing, uh, one of the two of the challenges did was they took the bundle and they went like this. And they did this back. And that, that worked for them. You got, you got this thing flat. I always say kind of pull them like a deck of cards or whatever, like that little, that little fan. All right, and then they're ready to go, okay? Now, the reason I felt for the reveal is because you want this shingle with the reveal side down. Okay, that way it slides right into position a lot easier. So this one will go like this, and this one's gonna be ready just like that. Okay, now that's gonna be a lot quicker than if you set them like this. So you'll see in a lot of videos, you click on probably half of the videos, you're gonna see people with their shingles like this. You will never see me doing that because what you're gonna have to do is, instead of coming out with a smooth one and a quick turn, you now have to do a spin to get it into place and a flop. All right, so that's that's no good there. So we got. Oops, which way is this? This goes that way. Oh shit! I don't screwed it up. Take it off. We'll we just leave those two out. There we go. Four. Okay, so now what I do is, this originally started. There's usually 20 to 22 shingles in a pack, right? So these shingles come together. This is two shingles, but it's like one little stuck side. So in my, in my own head, I used to call it, um, I used to say, okay, 
I'm going to take three, which is actually technically six, right? You're staying with me on the mat. And I used to go put it down there. And then I'd put four and four, which would be six, eight, and eight, which makes about 22 shingles, okay? That's how I used to do it. Since then, I don't, I don't spend as much time with the particulars of that, okay? What I do is I put my bundle roughly where a whole bundle is going to run out. I've got it opened and flapped. Pretend I just did that real quick. And then what I do is leave, leave six shingles or eight shingles, whatever. And you just lay them inside the for a little bit until you get down all the way down to the bottom. All right? Now, it's better, I'm just gonna put these up here. It's better to have to uh, reach for shingles than it is uh, to step on them. So what I mean by that is, if I'm coming through here and I'm shingling, it's better for me to have to reach because I can shuffle my legs while I'm doing this and go for it rather than having too big of a pile here and be stepping on them. Then I'm forced to do this, which is okay. But I would rather be able to just reach up here and pull a little of that pile down. I'm just adjusting this. I would rather want to just reach and pull two or three towards me. And that usually will catch you right back online, okay? So, um, so that's the consistency behind doing that run. That's going to speed you up more than anything else. And a lot of people think that nailing fast is going to make you fast. Nope. What it does is it makes you sloppy, okay? So, like I said, efficiency and consistency, it goes along with quality. A lot of people say or comment on my videos and they're saying quality over quantity and all this stuff. It doesn't count if it's not quality. Like what do you, it, it doesn't make any, any sense to me that people are even saying that I'm clearly putting the nails where they're supposed to go and everything like that. So I'm not about, I'm not going to be the fastest hack. There's no, there's no glory in that. So, and, and believe me, I, I, I used to be a hack and that's why, that's why these videos are so important to me in making this channel because I was taught by people who didn't know what they were doing. They did actually very little teaching. And, you know, I got a lot of my experience on warehouses, big runs, five bundle runs, you know, a 660 square warehouse of all the employees. We did it in sections, a couple different hundred, 120 square sections or something like that. Of all the employees that, that were, that went through that company at that time, I was the only person who tore off and shingled on a absolutely every section of that building. So I got a lot of experience doing that, and that's how I got really good at these runs. And uh, I mean, there's still even stuff that I learned. Like I said, I just changed how I'm opening my packages. That was back, you know, I'm 29 now. That was back when I was 22, 23 years old. So there's always room to grow. So I want you guys to keep that in mind here. But back then, they would just be like, just slap it on. It's just a warehouse, you know? And there's, if you look down that roof, it was snaking. It was just nothing but waves, you know? And I didn't know any better because really I just thought like, oh, it's not going to leak, whatever, it's good, and they, they're not, and it's just, it's terrible, you know, and there was no management back then to tell me the right way to do it, and it took one guy coming up, and I've talked about him several times on this, on this channel here, his name is Ducky, and he is very fast, the guy shingles just the way I do, he's in his 40s, and he's not changing nothing, he shingles standing up, he keeps his one little pouch on him, right on his side, holds four or six coils, and his knife or whatever, um, and uh, his little hammer or whatever. So, you know, he, he came on and I remember specifically me going, don't even worry, just slap him on, man, you know, whatever. And he's like, no. And he burnt all of us, stung us all. He beat us all by leaps and bounds and he put him on way straighter, way more correct. And he ended up being the one that molded all of us into decent shinglers. And, you know, I really would love to get back up on that building and show you guys how straight one of those sides are. Me and that guy pounded out. I mean, we ended up shingling for years after that. So, you know, you can be a hack before and still fix it. Believe me, it's, it's, it's better to be good and efficient and fast and correct than it is to be just fast and sloppy. I promise you. So, um, I just wanted to share that with you guys now. Okay. So, so our next thing here is we want to get to, uh, we want to get to, uh, nailing. Like I said, most people want they want to fast, they want to nail very fast, speed nail, and they think that it's going to make it up, okay? But it, you could literally, I, I want one of you guys to do this if you guys are good at this stuff. Go ahead and cut a section of, of my video out any anytime I'm doing a one bundle run, and I want you to go ahead and add in there someone who's nailing really, really fast. 
nine nine out of ten of those people that have other videos out there's a few of them that will be pretty comparative if they're if they're speed nailing but again that goes into a pace that you can hold all day can are they going to be able to carry that pace for a long period of time the answer is no there is a good chance it's no if they can do it for one day good luck getting along for the week let alone a whole shingle season if you if you got a really big uh busy company you're working for okay but if you guys are to split that up there's going to be a very minute difference between me who's doing these tricks that i'm teaching you and someone who's just getting them into place real quick and and slapping it on fast right so let's just take it to the pure basics of nailing real fast okay and how you well let's go with how you shut your set your shingle first okay so you see i'm getting my gun there i'm hooking this little lip all right and i'm sending this shingle over and i'm letting it slide and look where i'm putting my finger i'm getting it close and getting it getting it right there now one thing i will admit is if this shingle were to be right there or right here even there's a good chance I'm not going to waste all day on this shingle trying to get it correct, okay? You won't see it if it's a little bit. Usually I'll give it a butt, and if it's close enough, it's good. If it's down like that, I'm definitely going to make an adjustment. But sometimes when you're butting this left side, this is one of the only things you let slide a little bit on a roof. Is If it's close enough, it's good enough. And, and don't take that wrong, none of you guys. When I say close enough, I'm talking, go ahead and get a close up on that. You know, like I would let that slide. That's what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something close, right? Somewhere in that range, I would say do not spend too much time on one shingle. You don't want to do that. So we got this here now. Okay, I'm going to get back in my position. It's good. As I nail, I'm going to put my first nail about one inch from the end. Everybody knows that. And then as I come through, this gun's going to turn and it's going to go more of a sideways angle because your wrist is stronger that way and you're gonna be a lot more accurate than if you go this way, you got a little, you got a lot more wrist break in it, okay? Now that was obviously exaggerated, so yeah, I gotta keep explaining myself for the hater herd. But okay, so we're gonna, as we go over, we're gonna keep doing that, okay? Now we wanna reach with our left hand while we're nailing for that next, that next pile. And if you're doing it like me with the gun as a gauge, you want your gun as far over as you can get it because that's gonna help you be straight versus if you're doing it right here, because this might, Look straight and it happens to be on, but you can, it, it's a lot easier to get kinked that way. If you put the gun a little bit further over, you don't really have to double check this that much. I mean, it, it's few and far between that, that that will actually get off. It, once you get the hang of it, I want you guys to take it slow if you're new to that. Don't just say because I told you to put your gun far that it's gonna be good every time. You should double check until you really get into the groove of things, but you're gonna have that good now. Okay, now we're reaching for that other shingle as we're nailing. So it's almost like we have our own tosser. And we can always come back and nail, or add a nail if one of them, if a couple of them were bad. All right? So it's almost just like having a tosser, right? And now because you're getting these shingles, back to how you do that right how you open your bundles and everything but now you've opened consistently and you're getting these shingles into place fast without having any help right so the fact that you're nailing it slow is going to be a lot faster than most people okay so i'm going to go ahead and do a little bit here and i want you guys to see even though i'm going even though i'm going pretty slow i'm not nailing super fast look how look how nice that is right as long as I'm using that left hand to, to slam them shingles out for me right so eventually you'll get a little bit faster and you will be allowed to nail a little bit faster okay now again you'll see me nail a little bit fast sometimes I do do that but it's it's controlled nailing Nine, nine out of ten people that I, I probably said that number a bunch of times, but nine out of ten of these mother, they they're all missing the line, okay? They really are. So uh, make sure you're doing that correct. All right. So that's gonna help you guys on your runs. I guess we can just make that the video. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be making plenty more videos on this. I probably will start putting a little more time into these videos now that I'm almost at 15,000 followers. So thank you guys for subscribing and everything like that. Uh, it means a lot to me and I'm glad that these videos are reaching people who are going to be able to make more money just by watching these and and uh, figuring out uh, or trying out some of the stuff that I'm teaching, you know, because being paid by the square ain't easy. You know, James, 
James alone, he's been only shingling this for a little bit. Go ahead and show him that. You know, but that's probably, he's got about four square down. You know, that's only 80 bucks. So he's got to, you know, he's really got to hustle to get that. If he gets that done in two hours, he's making 40 bucks an hour. That's good stuff. You know, I'm just, I'm just happy that these videos are helping people. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. I know a lot of you guys watching, watch consistently without subscribing. So hit that button. As always, hit the like button and thank you guys. Bye.